You're watching the Realme GT Neo 2 disassembly. If you want to see more videos like this, make sure you like, subscribe, and click on the notification bell so you'll be notified when I upload new videos. And if you need any tools, there are links in the description. First, the SIM tray needs to be removed. Next, we need to apply heat to the back plate using a hairdryer or a heat gun to loosen up the adhesive underneath. And then we're going to use a plastic pry tool to pry the back plate off. Here's a better look at the glass back plate. The glass camera lens cover can be replaced by applying heat and prying it off. Here's a look at the other side. There are 17 Phillips screws which need to be removed. Once all the screws are removed, we're going to place a plastic pry tool in between the back housing and the frame of the screen and then run along the edges to pop off the catches. The back housing is made of plastic. The NFC antenna is located on top and the LED flash is located next to it, as well as a graphene film which helps transfer heat. On the other side, there are numerous antenna flex cables around the housing. Now, before we continue, we're going to disconnect the battery cable. Once the battery cable is disconnected, we can proceed to disconnect the rest of the cables. There are two coaxial cables on the right side of the main board which need to be disconnected by popping them off. There's some copper tape with graphite over it on top of the front facing camera connector which needs to be peeled off so we can disconnect that and remove it. There's a single Phillips screw on the side of the board holding it down, which needs to be removed. Now the main board can be lifted up and removed. There's a secondary microphone on the top corner, and there's copper tape on top of the shields. There are also some rubber gaskets around the connectors. Once the copper tape is peeled back, we can see thermal pads on top of these ships. On the back side, the proximity sensor is located on top, and there's more copper tape on the back shields as well as some thermal paste in the center. Once the copper tape is peeled back, we can see more thermal paste on top of the processor and RAM, as well as this chip over here, and some more thermal pads on these chips. Now the fingerprint reader cable needs to be disconnected from the subboard, as well as this flex cable underneath it. And then the two other ends of the coaxial cable need to be disconnected by popping them off. Now the subboard can be lifted up and removed. The primary microphone is located underneath the shield in the center, and there are rubber gaskets around these connectors. The SIM reader is located underneath the subboard. There's some adhesive holding the speaker assembly down, so we need to carefully pry it off. There's some more graphene film on top of the speaker assembly. There's also a mesh filter over the speaker opening. And here's the other side. There are two pull tabs on either side of the battery to help us pry the battery off. Here's a better look at the two batteries, which are joined together as one in the center. This flex cable connects the charger port to the main board. This one connects the main board to the subboard. 
and this one over here connects the screen to the main board. So if you need to replace your screen, you would have to take the back plate off, remove the screws and the back housing, and then you would need to remove the subboard on the bottom, which will give you access to the screen cable over here. You'd be able to disconnect the screen cable from this flex cable, and then you'd heat up the front of the phone where the screen is to loosen up the adhesive underneath, pry your old screen off, apply new adhesive, reapply the new screen, and reassemble the phone. Once these flex cables are peeled off, we can see the stainless steel vapor chamber underneath, which is seated underneath the battery as well as the motherboard over here. The x-axis linear motor or the vibrator motor is located over here and that's held down with adhesive so you can apply some heat and gently pry it off. Same with the fingerprint reader that's also held down with some adhesive. There's a rubber gasket around the charger port and the flex cable for it is held down with adhesive so if you need to replace that you have to gently pry it off. This is the flex cable for the power button clicker and the flex cable for the volume keys is on the opposite side. The earpiece speaker is located on top and that's also held down with some adhesive. The mid frame itself is a type of aluminum alloy with a plastic border. So the black parts you see are plastic. For the repairability score, I give this phone an eight out of 10. The adhesive on the back plate is really strong, so it's somewhat difficult to pry that off. However, when it comes to replacing the battery, there are provided pull tabs to help you pry that off. And replacing the screen won't be too difficult since you don't need to remove too many components to gain access to the screen cable. Now it's time to put the phone back together. Once all the screws are back in place, apply new adhesive and reapply your back plate. Now flip over the phone, power it on, and you're done. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.